Well, everybody, this has been a long, long time coming. What I wanted to do is I wanted to test some of the best air coolers that we've tested up to this point on today's most popular CPU, the 9800X3D. Not only that, we are also going to be testing previous generation X3D processors too. And if you're interested in any of these air coolers, all of their links to buy them will be in the description down below. And if you're interested in knowing what the heck this is on my finger and why I'm constantly giving sort of like a thumbs up, well, let's just say bone fracture, three stitches, and a Greek salad that sort of had a side of finger after I sliced into this thing. And I know the best thing you could get for temperatures is of course an all-in-one liquid cooler or a custom loop. But is that really necessary? Because every dollar saved on cooling is one that can ultimately spent on something like a better GPU, faster memory, or more storage. But at the same time, you don't wanna completely cheap out on a CPU heatsink. Ever. So to be honest with you here, we've come up with sort of like a hybrid list that includes, yes, a lot of the best CPU coolers we've ever tested on the AM5 platform, right alongside some very, very recognizable coolers that you're probably gonna be finding on local store shelves. And two of them that you'll probably see at most brick and mortar retailers are the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite and Corsair A115. Neither of these actually did very well on our initial AM5 testing on Ryzen 7000 series chips. And Corsair might silently be discontinuing their air cooler altogether, but you'll still find these almost everywhere, at least around here. Meanwhile, the ID Cooling Frozen A720 is a cooler I really wanted to include here, since even though it is one of the best we've ever tested on both Intel and AMD platforms, I think a lot of people might still be sort of sleeping on it. ID Cooling has gone with a dual 140 millimeter design, so this is one of the bigger coolers here, and with a rating supposedly of 300 watts, there's enough thermal capacity for any upgrade you'd want in the future, not to mention it being completely overkill for X3D CPUs like this one. And yet, it's the price you'll want to pay attention to. At $70 US or even less when it's on sale, the amount of value you get here is, is, is crazy. And while it isn't part of this roundup, if you want to save some money and space, the smaller, more compact Frozen A620 did really good for us in the past too. Of course, I'm also including the Noctua D15 G2 in its standard form, since it's the Mac Daddy of air coolers with an insane price to match. And no, I'm not using the AMD specific LBC version either, since we actually don't recommend it. And if you wanna see why, well, head over to our dedicated D15 G2 review for that. There's also a trio of thermal right coolers here. The Phantom Spirit 120, which uses a dual 120 millimeter layout and the bigger 140 millimeter based Peerless Assassin 140 and Frost Spirit V3. These specific ones were chosen because after testing almost a dozen thermal right heat sinks, these gave the best performance on AM5 processors. But the biggest element of all these thermal right coolers is that they're very, very, very affordable and pretty widely available right across the globe. I mean, the Frost Spirit V3 looks like it might be getting replaced by the Royal Praetor series at some point, but you can still find it for like under $50 US. Here in Canada, it's typically under 65 bucks. The, the value there is pretty incredible. The Phantom Spirit 120 and also the Peerless Assassin 140, those tend to go for under $40. There's also the FSP MP7 as another value pick since it gave really good numbers in the past. The final one though is the Scythe Fuma 3. And look, this is not a top tier performer by any stretch of the imagination, but this one for me is a personal pick. It's one of my favorite coolers of all time. I also wanted to give you an idea of how an AIO would do here, and for that we're using the Liquid Freezer 3 in its 240 millimeter format, which at just 70 bucks is actually less expensive than more than half of the air coolers that you're gonna see here. So that's a full lineup that we've chosen for this video. And since they were adding the 9800X3D to upcoming testing, we're going to build out additional coolers into our testing regime with this chip as time goes on. But before we get into the results, I also wanted to talk a little bit more and give you guys a refresher about how we are going to be presenting those results because it's very different from a lot of other reviews that you will see out there. So on the x-axis, we have the noise level in decibels, which starts from just above our noise floor. We test each cooler at single decibel intervals and see 
how they perform at each point. The y-axis houses the temperatures. This effectively gives us decibel normalized performance throughout each cooler's entire noise range, with the best heat sinks delivering the lowest CPU temperature at the lowest possible noise levels. Basically, we want to recommend coolers here that don't need to get loud, to be good. So on to the results, and even though this is a gaming focused CPU that likely won't have all of its cores fully utilized, let's start with an all core workload to establish a worst case baseline here. And right away the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 jumps out way, way ahead by being a solid 4 degrees lower than even the best air cooler. And speaking of those best air coolers, the D15G2 and ID Cooling Frozen A720 are literally neck and neck here, even though the 720 costs about half as much as the Noctua. It also has a pretty distinct sweet spot between 36 and 42 decibels. Go above that noise envelope and there is a diminishing rate of return. Meanwhile, the Corsair A115 and Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite get reasonably good numbers, but when you consider their prices, a middle of the pack finish isn't all that great. They're essentially tied with the Peerless Assassin 140 and Frost Spirit 140 V3, two coolers I actually thought would do a whole lot better here. But Thermal Rate still managed to pull off a huge win with their Phantom Spirit 120. It might have a super compact footprint compared to the other coolers here, but it can trade blows with the big boys throughout its entire RPM range. The two heatsinks bringing up the rear are the FSP MP7 and the Scythe Fuma 3, but I think it's very important to remember here that Scythe they did the best thing possible. They sacrificed a bit of performance for being the only heatsink here with 100% memory compatibility. And that's one of the reasons why I love it so bloody much. And if we look at things through a higher level view, normalized down to 38 decibels, there's a pretty wide delta of about six degrees separating the best from the worst air coolers here. But most of them are within less than three degrees of one another. But that difference doesn't impact clock speeds whatsoever, with every single heatsink getting nearly identical results, even with a very narrow margin of error. This is actually something we've seen from every AM5 processor so far. Provided temperatures remain below 90 degrees, these CPUs don't tend to vary clock speeds all that much, and instead will easily hit their all-core maximum frequency all day, every day. On the flip side of that coin, gaming shows us a very different story from the all-core workload results. While Cyberpunk is one of the most CPU-intensive games around, the actual processor is under a lot less stress than in the previous Blender test. But the heatsinks are now also munching down on all of the heat being produced by the GPU too. And that tends to widen some gaps too, like the Arctic AIO being able to pull even further ahead of the best air coolers, and the Fuma and FSP also losing by a bit more to those mid-tier performers. Meanwhile, the D15G2 and A720 are still essentially tied at lower decibel levels, but once again, the Noctua is able to pull a bit ahead between 38 and 42 decibels. This is also an area where the higher ambient case temperatures end up negatively impacting the Phantom Spirit's performance against bigger heatsinks, specifically at lower ends of its RPM spectrum. As for all the other ones here, it doesn't matter if it's the high-priced A115 and the Dark Rock Elite, or the budget-focused PA140 and Frost Spirit 140. They all provide pretty much the same performance. And yet at a normalized 38 decibels, there's once again about six degrees separating all of these, which mirrors what happened in the full core workload testing. Though some of the positions have shifted here, like the Phantom Spirit coming down a few notches. And like you might've guessed by now, frame rates aren't impacted at all. You could be running an X3D at just 52 degrees on a 240 millimeter AIO or 63 degrees on the Fuma 3 and be guaranteed of the same overall performance. Actually, you could probably slap an ultra low profile Noctua L9A or Thermalrite AXP90 X53 onto this thing and those frame rates probably still wouldn't be impacted. And no, like I said before, that's not where we stop. Look, the 9800 X3D is right now very close to that peak of the AMD X3D iceberg. But what about the other people that are out there? Maybe you have a 7800 X3D and you might be looking for a cooler upgrade to a different type of air cooler. Or you might be one of those AM4 holdouts and you are looking right now to upgrade to a 5800 X3D or actually probably the 5700 X3D because the 5800 X3D is pretty much 
EOL across the globe? Well, we wanted to do a couple of tests for you guys too. So kicking things off with the 7800X3D and right away, you'll notice the order of business has changed a lot. The A720 is still one of the top performing options, but it's the Frost Spirit, FSP, MP7, and PA140 that round out the top five with the D15G2 and PS120 suddenly becoming sort of like middle of the pack options. Meanwhile, the A115 and Elite are beaten by the Fuma 3. And overall, you'll notice the 7800X3D does tend to run a lot hotter than the 9800X3D did, to the tune of about 8 degrees on average. This whole upending of the normal order we saw with the 9800X3D is likely due to one fundamental difference between the 7000 and 9000 series X3D processors. The latest generation chips have the 3D V-cache moved to below the processing dies, which in effect leads to a different heat signature and enhances cooling capabilities. Meanwhile, the 7800X3D did not have this advantage. And finally, there's the 5800X3D, which believe it or not, is our hottest running single CCD X3D processor here at the office. Honestly, we probably just lost the silicon lottery or something, but either way, this is a perfect analog of a worst case scenario for 5800X3D and 5700X3D owners. And ironically, we get another switch up with the order being very similar to what we saw on the 9800X3D, at least with those top spots. So the PS120, D15, and A720 are all battling it out for the first place this time. The FSP MP7 also puts in a pretty good showing here, but the other coolers, well, they ended up pulling up the rear, though again by only a few degrees. Honestly, if you have any of these heat sinks, you'll be perfectly fine. Don't run out and buy a new one in a futile attempt to save like five degrees. So ultimately, once the dust settled, what are my recommendations here for an air cooler for the 9800X3D or any X3D chip for that matter? Well, from a budget perspective, I'm gonna have to go with the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit 120. This thing, price to performance, it is almost impossible to beat right now. Now, if you wanna sacrifice a little bit on the size to get the absolute best air cooling experience, well, we're looking at this guy, the Frozen A720. Again, this is the cooler that I think a lot of people are simply just like sleeping on. They haven't realized that this is a D15 G2 competitor in a lot of cases, and especially on the 9800X3D for like a half the price. So anyways, I guess that pretty much wraps up this video. You're going to see the 9800X3D featured in all air cooling and liquid cooling reviews going forward now that we have a solid baseline here. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day guys.